Hey Ron, speaking of the moon, have you watched Moon Knight? All right, welcome to the Q&A show on Photofocus for October 2022. Ron Pepper, Rob Morodo are back for Q&A. Uh, we changed the schedule a little bit. We're going to do roundtable next week. Normally we'd have roundtable this week. With a little Wanted to get a couple people on specifically, so we're going to do that this coming week. All right, uh, today we've got questions about rain. We've got questions about bags. We love talking about bags. Uh, we've got questions about the moon. So before that, let's thank our sponsor, Tamron. Rob, take yes. it away. Yes, thank you to, uh, to uh, Tamron for sponsoring us. And today they're trying to introduce the 20 to 40 mil F2 for a Sony full frame camera. Now, we looked at this lens and, and you know, when I first saw it, I thought, you know, 20 to 40 mil, and that seemed kind of strange because it's not, it doesn't seem very wide on the wide end or very long on the long end. But, you know, you, you start thinking about like, I do this, I go out and I shoot 35 mil. Like 35 is like the uh, focal length to use for like good old street photography. And there's sometimes when you're out with a 35, we're like, ah, it's not wide enough or ah, I wish I could zoom in a bit. And this lens would be perfect for that because it is that sweet spot between the 20 and 40. And it just hovers around that perfect 35. So you know what? I, I'd love to try this lens out, especially considering how close uh, you can get it. It's uh, looked on their website, and you can you can do a uh, like almost macro photography. Like the close focus distance is like six point eight uh, inches or something like that. It's like super super close for this oh, kind cool. of lens. Yeah, that, yeah. So I keep I keep thinking I need to get a, a a real macro lens. But yeah, you're right. The thirty five. When I looked at twenty forty, it didn't didn't click right away. But then you mentioned the thirty five. That makes sense. That's a really common for the exterior photos of uh, houses or for street photography. Yes, yeah, so you have a little leeway there. And it's 2.8 throughout, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, Rob, yeah, one, and you of, can, and if you one can of us needs to get a Sony get... so we can start testing these lenses better, right? <laughs> right? Because I was thinking about this. Like 6.7 inches for your minimum object distance means that I could go pretty much up to your ear and take a picture of you. And at 2.8, you know, you get that eye perfectly in, in focus or the tip of your nose perfectly in focus and then everything else out. Yeah. It'd be, be kind of neat. It's uh, it, It'll do for really, really cool looking uh, portraits and amazing stuff for street photography. Really a lot of, it, it looks like it would be a really fun lens to use. But yes, so thank you, Tamron. And for anyone out there with a Sony E-mount camera, I would highly suggest uh, going to your local camera store and trying that out, the 20 to 40 f 2.8. And link in the show camera. notes. Hey, do you go to your local camera? Great. So what do, do we go, got today? Do you go to your local camera store much? Me? Oh, yeah, yeah. all the time. Um, but then again, I'm from Cal Calgary, Alberta, which is the home of the camera store. So I didn't know that. Uh, we get to go there. And um, it used to be that uh, Jordan Drake and Chris Nichols, who were the hosts of the camera store TV, doc, camera store TV on YouTube, very <laughs> really popular YouTube channel there. Uh, they'd be there all the time. So we could just chit chat with the stars there. Cool. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. And they got a great selection too. Yes. I mean, every time I am in San Francisco for any reason, since I live outside of this outside the city now and every time i'm in there i think what do i need to go to what do i need to go for to sammy's for check out i could look at oh i could look at bags we'll talk about bags in a little bit oh <laughs> the uh yeah so let's move on to questions it's a q a show so we're not gonna try to keep y'all here all day um first question comes from speaking of my area fred glazer in antioch california and fred a couple years ago i That's wouldn't have known where antioch is but We've been going there for high school football. Uh, I literally, they have like a very hot in the early fall, very hot place to play football. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I would not have been able to pronounce that name, Antioch. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, hey, Fred says, uh, what are some ideas and methods to use when photographing in the rain? Oh. <laughs> Wait, do you get rain in Antioch? Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, do you guys get you guys. Get it seems rain? really hot to me, but I mean, uh, it has to be seasonal. But yeah, 
No, honestly, I love shooting uh, portraits in the mm. rain. Like, uh, you know, the old fashioned portraits where you see the uh, uh, the guy in the three piece suit underneath the oh, the yeah. uh, the lamp with the umbrella, and then you just see the the rain droplets next to them. I love that look. The only problem is if you're shooting out in the rain, you're also in the rain, which also sucks. But the shots that you can get are really cool. Um, the one thing that I got to say about the photographing in the rain, like we, we shoot in the rain and the snow all the time uh, because, well, my company, we do real estate photography. So when realtors call us up and say, hey, go shoot that house, we don't know if it's going to be raining that day or snowing that day or hailing or, it's, or if it's sunny. Um, and so even if it's raining, we have to get the shot. We can Photoshop in a blue sky later, but we got to get the shots. So one of the things that we always do is we carry around an umbrella. Um, but, uh, you know, we've seen these plastic bag covers and things like that. But after a while, we just got to the point where we're like, you know what? We understand why they have uh, weather sealed cameras. Yeah, that was one of the things <laughs> I wanted to mention. Since then, yeah, since then, we've just gone out in the rain, cameras get wet, bring in, it, uh, bring in like a, a towel afterwards, towel it off gently, and then. Uh, as long as you don't put it back into your bag mm. wet, it it'll dry yeah. off, and th- that was uh, that saved us a lot of time and a lot of headache and a lot of those silly bags that went over your went over your camera. And yeah, if you've got a good weather sealed camera, you're not going to worry about w- water getting in behind the lens into the body and, and all that's that. Most, and that's course, most current cameras, right? It is. It is. And the other thing is. Um, Hopefully, you're not changing your lens in the rain. (laughs) So you're not getting, like, rain droplets on your sensor. Um, But, you know, I think that's the only thing that I would really look out for on the the gear side. And, oh, actually, no, 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 no. Speaking about that, um, uh, speaking about that portrait of the person underneath the lamppost and everything, lighting. On-camera lighting does not work with raindrops. Oh, good one. Good one. I wouldn't have thought of that. Right? Because if you use a flash that's on camera, then all of a sudden what it's doing is it's just lighting up <laughs> right. all those rain droplets that are right in front of your lens, creating these w- little white spots all over unless the place. You, unless you get but real creative with that. But if you are able... <laughs> yeah, like if you can use a... Uh, oh, you know what? There, if you can use... Uh, um, oh, my God. I have lost the word. Uh, constant lighting. There we go. If you have constant lighting and you're shooting rain in the, in the, uh, uh, when it's darker out and you can slow down that shutter speed. So all those little rain droplets look like, you know, uh, long elongated lines. That looks really cool too. Mm. And you just have to adjust your shutter speed to get the rain to look like the length of lines that you need for those areas. You could do, you could do some with uh with flash you wouldn't be able to well unless there's something i haven't thought of yet you wouldn't be able to do the portraits and stuff like that like street photography of of people but you could get really creative and probably do some amazing uh just something different because they'd be light lit up in all different ways and maybe you're i'm just thinking just off the top of my head like you know how you get a uh say the Christmas lights in the background are all blurry and beautiful and smudgy and cool bouquet, you know, maybe you make that in the front. Maybe yeah. you get those, maybe you get the crazy weird colors of, or, or the, wouldn't be colors, but unless you gel it, but you do something crazy with the uh, drops in the front and there's a subject behind Maybe I'm just thinking off the mm-hmm. top of my head. I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> um, what I, what I want to, yeah, you know, there's a, yeah, Oh, I was just thinking like uh, there was a, a videographer that I saw that was doing some really cool stuff where he took a teleprompter and flipped it upside down and so that water could hit the front of the teleprompter and bead down. And so instead of having like uh, water actually getting onto your lens, it's beating down on the teleprompter. So you have this blurry like water dripping down kind of look like you're looking outside of a window. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's uh, obscuring your, uh, shot, but it was really cool that he used a teleprompter because just the angle of, uh, of it and, uh, it, it worked out really, really well and really cool effect. I was going to, I was going um, to say that usually when you see those, uh, those, they can be really cool. I hope they're not going to cliche cause I think they're cool that where you get the, 
the droplets close to the camera, like you're looking through a window and they're big droplets. And then like every droplet might show you, let's just say the Golden Gate Bridge, like each bro- droplet, oh, has, you know, yeah, yeah. and those uh, can be really cool. But, uh, well, the thing about those is those are, as far as I know, always very well planned. Like that piece of, that piece of glass is <laughs> held there specifically in that spot. And it's probably has been, what do they do? They spray it with like a silicone spray or something. I think, is that right? Um, yeah. And then it makes yeah. the, and then, uh, the think- beads up much more and they probably sprayed it specifically. So anyway, um, those are really very set up, which is great. I mean, do that. But I just was going to say like, if it's raining and you try to get, like, I've tried to do shots out my sunroof <laughs> and, and, and they can be cool mm-hmm. like snapshots, but they're not your, you're not the classic one you're going to frame. Um, uh, I, I wanted to yeah. finish off. Uh, I agree with you about forget for the most part, depending, unless you're going to be on a downpour for a long time, then, um, you know, you probably don't need the, the camera cover anymore is my cameras are weather sealed. And, and I agree that I've been in my, now I've been in minor rain and I just didn't worry about it. And like you said, just let it dry out. And, um, so unless you're getting a lot mm-hmm. of water on the, the actual lens, that's, that's getting in the way. Other than that, you don't really need to worry about the rain. And if you have a hat on, that'll mostly cover most of the camera, depending on the lens anyway the body yep. and it'll cover the controls because the the problem i have is that uh, when i want to chimp the photo or want to check some settings or any anything like that and then i have to wipe off this happened to me the other just the other night i'm always with my sleeve wiping off the lcd screen so i can see it because of either water or just um gets fogged up because it got cold mm-hmm. so um yeah i, I would say with reason don't worry too much about the camera check if your camera is considered weather sealed and then just go have fun with it yeah. and and speaking of having fun with it uh, this goes along maybe along with we've been talking about autumn photography in the last couple of shows um but we've been getting oh, questions yeah. and, and we had a couple of stories and i should say that there are some stories a number of posts about autumn photography on photo focus so check out the written ones but Mm-hmm. try things that are different and like like uh, i always say i always use the word like embrace something so embrace the rain and do something different like you see a lot of people maybe shooting straight down from a building at umbrella people walking by or um you know do something that you wouldn't normally think was interesting and 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 get outside that box and um yeah speaking of outside the box uh you were um you're talking about uh using lighting and and I, I wish I remembered where I saw this so I could give credit, but somebody was putting a, I think it was a ring light. It looks like just a, probably a $30 ring Into light that I have on my desk here that you can get anywhere. And he put it up inside an umbrella and he was getting, um, yeah. getting interesting light coming down on, um, this was a, a, this was of a dog. And I, again, I wish I knew who this was so I could give credit, but I just thought, again, embrace the situation, do yeah. something different. And, uh, take advantage of the of the different kinds of framing, but also the the main thing during and this goes for autumn a lot is the difference in color. You're going to get this different quality of light that's mm-hmm. that's uh, probably usually good, but it's at least different than what you're used to. Because for me, I always go out on a nice day, and I forget sometimes that go out and yeah. get photography on a but it's normally not a nice day, and, and have fun with that. Well, the other thing with autumn that's really cool is that it's not just the leaves that are changing color and the uh, the rain and stuff like that, but it's the temperature. And where I'm living right now, like I live on Vancouver Island and I work in Calgary and it's a long commute. But the interesting thing is when you're in autumn, the temperature changes. So it, if you go out in the morning after a good rain, holy, that be- mm-hmm. that mist is beautiful, yeah. right? And the, you know, the sunsets go, uh, coming down when it's getting a little cooler, uh, the air is crisper, so it's cleaner. And you get some wicked sunsets and um, just just beautiful mm-hmm. and time to get out there, just a little chilly. Um, <laughs> I had I had a, I had a, I had a the, Astrid, we did, a, um, I went to a client, to a hotel that I'd shot some stuff before and they were doing like... Um, uh, pickup shots and uh, like stuff that wasn't ready the first time and and they wanted to redo a shot and the reason was that the it was out on a hotel enormous balcony and it was really cool actually it's all wet it's looking at the the bay bridge and the ferry building like right down to right down in the cool part and i thought and the the clouds were awesome it was at sun just after sunrise so we had like cool sun so anyway i thought it was really cool but they wanted it 
when it was dry. And I thought that the wet yeah. concrete made it look so much richer to me. But you know what? Yeah. When you're selling uh, hotel rooms, that's not what you want to show. <laughs> so I don't know. I just thought that was an interesting contrast. And I, because I even, I had been, I had coincidentally, like I, when he told me that, I, I pulled it up because I had coincidentally up on my iPad, I had it already open in the window because I, I liked it. And I said, wait, this one right here? <laughs> I liked it. So it wasn't because it was bad. It's just that they wanted it dry. But anyway, that's my, my yeah. some other thoughts on rain is to, again, embrace it. And some people are going to want it and some people are not. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I think you had something else you wanted to add. No, that, that's about it. Like uh, rain's, a, rain's an interesting one. It's just such a, it's, it's also a, like, you know, shooting underwater it's uh, it's a it's a it's different yeah there's so many other things that you have to take into consideration mm -hmm. that yeah it's, I guess maybe uh, this maybe this is another one it, uh, you got you got rob you're from canada where it's pretty cold i'm from seattle where i sometimes i joke around like around here i go you no know, no self-respecting seattleite's gonna walk around in the light rain with an umbrella come on like i'll tell like if my someone i'm with or my kids mm -hmm. or something i'll say we need an umbrella like come on so maybe maybe Fred from Antioch, <laughs> maybe he doesn't see enough rain, <laughs> and it's just the uh, one one. Um, uh, maybe the best advice is just to think rain is can be good. I mean that's maybe that's it. Yeah, it's you know much better than dust. Which you know if anybody that's ever gone and shot down in uh, oh my god, what where's that called now? Um, well, <laughs> anywhere where it's, where it's dry, <laughs> it's, it's a whole lot better than Vegas. dust, I gotta say. Um, let's go, oh my let's God. go to a second question. And this is one of those where, um, thanks everybody for writing in, uh, keep doing that, please. We've got a few things about the moon and I'm guessing it's for the same reason. I was out a mm -hmm. couple of times over the weekend and I went wait, I didn't realize the moon was going to be doing this or I would have been prepared because I was out in our park and the, the moon was rising above the, the water park thing that's over there. And I thought, wow, I should have had my, I should have had a, you know, the right camera with me. And I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of people had the same because Tim, Ollie or Oli, Fran, Rob, Rob, was that you? No. Um, no uh, we're asking about, <laughs> about the moon. So I put it in as a mm -hmm. general question. Let's talk about full moon. And uh, mm -hmm. I have plenty of tech. Well, I've, I've, I have better than the average amount of technical recommendations. Um, and I guess I could okay. start with that and then see what you got. Or do you want to go first? Sure. Go, uh, go ahead. Because, yeah, go ahead. Well, the moon is um, harder to shoot than you think. And I'm I, again. I have a feeling that's why we got a the quarter million miles away from Earth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's moving. It's moving pretty fast. Um, and I think that's oh, yeah. the reason we got a lot of questions. Is I think people try to shoot like maybe. I, hey, I did too. I had my iPhone with me, and I put it on two times telephoto, or whatever. And and no, you're you're not going to get any <laughs> decent moonshots. But the reason is, this is one of those times where you go, like a lot of times we talk about our devices, like I. We all love our iPhones and, and um, people, others that have been on like their Android uh, mm -hmm. for, the, for the camera, that is. And, and we say, oh, yeah, give a good photographer an iPhone and you'll get a good shot. But that's not – here's an example when that's not the case where the, the moon, it's brighter than you think and, uh, mm -hmm. if you're t uh, and it's moving faster than you think. So when – so for instance, um, I remember I got this advice. Here's somebody else I want to have on sometime is Chris Marquardt. <laughs> I'm going to ask him. Um, I remember uh, he was – he said when you – if you're shooting – uh, I don't remember how much of this is him and how much this is me now, but it's, this is a long time ago. If you're just shooting only the moon and it's black sky and moon, so there's no foreground or anything, then the, your camera is going to try to figure out the exposure probably with the light meter. And it's going to have mostly black. Dep if you don't have a super zoom, that is, you're going to have a lot of black and only some moon. And it's going to try to figure out the exposure. And it's very, I don't want to get too much into it, but it's rare that it would get it right. So you really need to do it manually and take control. So start with something mm -hmm. along the line of a, like a low ISO, hopefully a, uh, like a F 10, something like that. And well, you wouldn't even need to do well, F 10 just because 
it's so far away. Well, there, it, uh, I'm being really general because this can depend on the quality of your lens and stuff like that because you're going to, uh, you're going to okay. have some differences in, um, oh, um, I'm at a loss for the name now, a little bit of a light, um, flare or blooming or whatever. And, yeah. and it just, you want to, uh, somewhere in the sweet spot. Okay. Uh, not, not too open, not too stop down. Some, something in the middle, F8, F10, mm-hmm. something, 11, something like that. And these are just general okay. ideas anyway. And, um, and one, one hundredth or one twenty fifth, something like that. Start with that and see, uh, and then you can just zoom in on your LCD screen and see, because usually it's going to be a bit overexposed, even if it looks good. Um, the, the Mm -hmm. sky should be black, not gray. (laughs) And the moon should be, (laughs) you should see the craters and everything. You should see the, you should see the topography on there a bit. So start with something like that, and it'll probably be need the speed will probably need to go up a little bit if depending on your aperture, but th- that's a good place to start. And, and you might need to do it without using the light meter or, God forbid, an automatic mode. You really need a manual and do the adjustments yourself. Um, the light meter might lie to you. So that's the, that's the biggest thing is the light meter not, might not handle mm-hmm. it, and it is moving pretty fast. Uh, we're moving. The Earth is moving. The, the sun. Um, the, the moon's moving faster than the earth, mm-hmm. but it's still moving quite a bit, even when you um, take into account that we're moving too. So for instance, when yeah. moving on now to, okay, uh, for a while, and I've talked about this about on some shows, I went with um, the, the great Fred Larson. <laughs> He's a local um, photographer here. And he's been doing moon photography for forever. I have stories about how I met him. And uh, I went to his meetups about, oh, let's, uh, let's say uh-huh. about once a month for a while because of full moons, whenever, whenever I could go. And in San Francisco, sometimes the weather would cooperate, sometimes not. So we'd go out there and try to get photos of the moon. And he did all the legwork on planning it. So we would meet in a certain location and he'd have it. Well, it's going to come up above the bridge. It's going to come up above Coit Tower. It's going to come up above. So he would do all that legwork. It was great. And we just had to do the technical parts of it. So if you want to have something like something in the foreground or even something in the foreground directly in front of the moon, like a, I tried to take shots of Coit Tower, which is a tower that has some um, uh, windows, uh, not real windows. They're just um, empty. Um, this, uh, with, there's no glass in it, just open. And so you can see right through it. And so you'd try to get the moon right behind it. Well, if you don't want a silhouette, that's almost, it's pretty impossible because you have to be shooting pretty fast. Plus you want that aperture Mm -hmm. now to be stopped down more. So you have all these difficulties. So what I'm getting at is you have to plan that so much. (laughs) And the best time Mm -hmm. is that moment right when the sun is going down but not down so much that your foreground, you want it to still have some sunlight <laughs> when the moon is coming up. And that, you know how long that happens, how often that happens and how long it lasts? <laughs> a very, very small <laughs> opportunity windows. So it takes a lot of planning. Photo mm-hmm. pills is what I use for that when I do that. And um, your timing, it's all about that timing. And if you can get the foreground and the, and the, the moon in the same shot, you're, you got to have a lot of planning, luck, timing, all, all, they have to converge. Um, even when I try to bracket, so of course I'm a big into bracketing person. So I, I would, Oh, I'll just solve that by bracketing. I'll get the foreground and I'll get the moon, but the moon moves, moves quite a bit. So you really have to use deghosting for that. You can do it manually, of course, and layer things. But like, in if you use like a a photomatics guys, people know, I think, so you put that in there and they're stacked and you got to use the deghosting and that can even be tricky. So a lot of trickiness mm-hmm. to the moon. Um, we haven't even got to focal <laughs> length and stuff yet. <laughs> oh, geez, definitely. You know, it's uh, it's funny. I was just uh, <laughs> I was reading up on. Uh, I, I was actually reading up on the moon, and it's on. Um, have you heard of it of xkcd.com? No. It's. Um, X- <laughs> it's a web comic by uh, American author uh, Randall Monroe, and he just wrote a book called "What If 2. And one, what he does is he takes questions from kids and from random people, and and he answers them scientifically. And one of the questions that he had was, "What would happen if there was a fire pole from the moon to the Earth, and you sl- and you slid down?" <laughs> okay. 
And I learned more about the moon from reading his <laughs> answer to that than anything else. And so having the moon on my on on uh, my mind was uh, uh, as a question here was great because it was already on my oh, mind. Cool. And um, you know that thing is you're right. It's it is uh, it's funny. You know he he explains it and he says it's a quarter million miles away. And if you were to calculate the moon moving compared to ground speed, like if it casts a shadow and the shadow is moving, it's moving at 35 miles per hour ground speed. So that's hmm. how quickly that moon is actually moving across your field of vision. It's yeah. quite a lot. Wow. Now, you know, the last time I had uh, to shoot the moon was because a client of mine asked me to... Uh, Photoshop in the moon into one of their exterior <laughs> shots and to make it look nice and big because it was uh, the marketing for it was like it's like moon mansion or moon uh, moonrise whatever like it, it was it was a, it was, a, it, was a, it was the name of the marketing campaign that they needed the moon mm-hmm. in it so I went out one night and tried to get and get the moon at night and it didn't go so well. You know, I had my uh, I had my 100 to 400 with a two times teleconverter on it, and and you get it out there, you try and get the shot, and every time I just did it just didn't feel right. So to fix this and to get the shot that I needed, I went out and shot it during the day. Yeah, nice. Because mm-hmm. the moon is also out during the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can see it up there, and what you do is you take your camera. You, you zoom right in on, onto it and you can get really fast shutter speeds because well it's daylight right yeah. and you zoom right in uh, I shot it at 2.8 because it was open and I knew that it was far enough away that I didn't have to worry about depth of field um, and I, I I shot it as fast as fast as I could and I'm always like no I probably stopped it down uh, probably stopped it down to around three three six or five six um and then um and then shot it i changed it to a black and white and essentially i used that as a uh let's see now it was screen i put it on top of my image that i had and i screened the moon back in to where it needed to be on my image was it uh um, is this the right word to say astronomically no was it in the correct position, like where it would be in the sky in relation to the house? Oh okay. no, 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 no. The uh, by the time that you you put in the moon and you enlarge it, it looks like it it looked like the cover of a vampire uh, novel, right? <laughs> where you see the moon is super big, there you could have a dog howling in the background or something to make <laughs> right. it look like that. But no, it was it was exaggerated, and it was exaggerated for the purpose of right, the marketing, right. and it wasn't anything else then you know they could have just gotten something off of getty images and done the same the same yeah. thing except they asked me to do it because i think i was cheaper or faster or just a whole lot easier to work with than buying something off of getty i, I remember doing that like at one point it's more than 10 years a long time ago i i was shooting um i had just been doing what you did uh, just for fun just maybe that's when i after i heard uh it's tips from the top floor is a pho- um, photography podcast been going on for the longest, longest, longer than any, any other, apparently. And I'm a big mm-hmm. fan and friend of him. And, uh, I had just been experimenting, taking photos of the moon, just, just the moon and the, and the black sky. And I had been, I was doing three mm-hmm. sixties for, um, for a rental or I think it was a rental property for a client that I usually work yeah. with. So I just took the moon and I just kind of cop, uh, sort of, uh, clone stamped it in you know just, just um in part of the panorama it was in it was a kind of a cool one at night they wanted night scenes so i did uh from a balcony in san francisco and you can see the bridge and so i put the moon above it and i have no idea where the moon is supposed to be in the sky from there <laughs> east but not really anyway he even commented he's oh you got you caught the moon in there as if that's easy <laughs> like, because if i had <laughs> yeah. just shot it even if the moon were in there I would have never been able to get it exposed right 
And so anyway, it was, mm-hmm. people just go, oh, that's nice. Look, isn't that nice? <laughs> and it was actually, yeah. I just did it for myself because I was had been experimenting with it and didn't expect anyone to notice and just, um, so anyway, anyway uh, experiment with it. Nice. Um, everybody asking about the moon. Um, I'm, I've used f- f- um, um, TPE, the Photographer's Ephemeris. That's what it's called, right? Is a is an app that mm. helps you plan these things, and I've used photo pills, which is I've been using photo pills more lately, and they have a cool yeah um, augmented reality where you you can just hold up the the your gadget and see where the moon or the sun will be at different times, and you can do it live. Oh, you hit cool. you hit right now, and it'll show you where it is. If it's below the horizon, you'll see that in gray. And then you can mm-hmm. drag and rotate it up to see at what time it's going to be popping up above the horizon. It's really cool. And so I recommend that. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, it's like, it's an app that's not like a cheap app, but it's really, um, I think it's more than, I think it's $10, so it's still cheap. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, relatively. They're not sponsors or anything, so how much do I talk about them? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else about the moon? Any, anything? You know, um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um I do rec. Maybe, maybe someone well, in in every anyone's area, any listener area. Maybe there's someone that does something like Fred does that holds these uh, meetups, and you get together, and it becomes social, of course. And the shooting is only within a few minutes, a couple minutes. There's a moment where you're going to want it. Oh yeah. You hear all the shutters going off, and um, one time I went. One time I went to. I think I did this on my own because it wasn't that group. But when I got there, it was, uh, it was up in the Marin Headlands, which is north of the Golden Gate Bridge. And it was a very San Francisco centric mm-hmm. episode today. And I was up, was, so up the hill from the ba- uh, Golden Gate Bridge. And there was one spot where me and apparently about more, at least a dozen other people had planned exactly the same thing because there was a, in relation to the moon, there was a perpendicular line of people all lined up with cameras trying to shoot <laughs> when the moon would go between go would show up in, in the golden gate bridge has those uh holes in it so it, it um when oh, i try to it's kind of yeah. like these rectangles um, the 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 tower yeah. is if for anybody that doesn't know that's the famous they th- say it's red but it's actually orange um bridge and then there are little um in the towers there are little rectangular openings all along the vertical and the moon was coming up yeah. and it was going to pop right into one of those. And everybody was trying to get that shot. So we were all in each other's way. <laughs> it was hilarious. Cause you get, you had to nice. be within a literally a few feet. <laughs> it was just such a specific thing. Yeah. So have fun with it. You know, it's funny, it like, and see what you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, it's, it's funny. Like you, you think of all the, I remember talking to somebody about doing shooting the moonrise, right? Like That's it, as it, as it's coming up over the over the ocean, and uh, it's not something that I do because, of course, I don't. Well, I do have an ocean uh, close to me, but on the other side, I've got mainland, so uh, it doesn't actually rise over the ocean like it would uh, down where you are. Um, but it's such a cool uh, idea to be able to to shoot the moon rising over uh, the the horizon and. Um, Hmm. Yeah, it's a. I, yeah, I can't get. I can't know, get it over. You start thinking about all the other. I can't things. get it over the ocean, but I can get it over the bay. Sometimes depends. It's typically east. Yeah. I mean, this isn't something I do very often, but actually, it's fun because when it comes up, clearly I like doing that. I need to do it again. I think I have a couple of those. I have to check. I think I have a couple of those on my Instagram from shooting moon photos a few years ago. Yeah. Um Like it's a it's a it's a neat concept because you have to really think about the foreground to the. Uh, foreground compared to the brightness yep. of the moon and i guess mm-hmm. if it's still not past sunset then the moon is less bright than it would be after sunset well the moon will the but moon will fore- stay uh, yeah pretty mm-hmm. much the same it's the foreground that if you have it right as the sun has gone down and there's still enough light to light the foreground <laughs> yeah. then that's the moment but that's pretty rare so uh, actually, another suggestion. That's a, that's a tough I have one. another suggestion is just to go go shoot. It's the moon rise, I think, that you want. So at night, when the moon is coming up, I think that's what you want. And I would go shoot. Forget forget if it's the full moon that day. Just go get some practice because as long as it's not a 
a sliver of a moon, the same things will apply. You know, if it's half the moon, it's going to, you'll mm. still get the practice. So I would go practice it ahead of time so that when that full moon happens and you'll know because you're using one of those apps that it's going to happen, um, you'll be just more ready because it, just like anything, you just got to practice. You just got to try it and figure out what's difficult and how you get around it and you'll get better off every, be much better every time. Yeah. Um, yeah, trial and error. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> hey, and, and, um, before we go to the last question, a couple things, I'll ask a couple of questions for listeners is, um, sure. In addition to send us all of these kinds of questions that you have, of course, and if you have ideas for, um, subjects for round table or guests, let me know. In fact, I'll try to get Fred and Chris, I'll try to, all the people I mentioned, I'll try to get, uh, I, I was thinking about doing a moon episode that would be just like mm -hmm. an extra episode on some Thursdays. So we have some Thursdays that are not always, in case you don't know, the photo focus tries to do a, well, we try to do a podcast on Thursdays and there isn't, we haven't been doing, um, always for a month. So, um, uh, for me again, it's a little bit of a labor <laughs> of love. So, uh, uh but it, if you're interested in those things, let me know. I was thinking about doing a getting together with talk about the moon with people that really know better than the two of us. <laughs> and, um, same thing with, uh, yep. photography apps. I was thinking about getting a, like a little app roundup because people have been bringing up, bringing those up. Um, maybe an NFT thing, mm -hmm. you know, although NFTs are kind of going away as a, as a popular subject. So, um, but the, the point is everybody listening, let me know questions at photofocus.com or photofocus.com slash questions. The, the link, photofocus.com slash questions has um, uh, a form so you don't have to send email if you don't want to. Um, mm -hmm. And ready for our last question for today? I'm ready for the last right. question. So we, <laughs> What's the last we question? actually held this one because last week Rob couldn't make it. So I had uh, Colin Smith on and I thought this one would be better for Rob and Ron than Colin and Ron. So it's, uh, um, I don't know if this is your name, but L from Atlanta. Okay. I like it. Um, just the letter. I would love to be just, just the, letter. the letter. Yeah. It's not E L like, like the in Spanish it's L. <laughs> um, hmm. can you name the movie? His name is L as in the, no. Yeah. And when he's not there, it's Christmas cause there's no L. Oh, but a boom. Wait, <laughs> wait, uh, see, I'm too slow. I'm too slow with this. Stuff, but there we go. Um, so the, <laughs> all right. So L in Atlanta, he, uh, he or she says, um, I know you guys see, I know it's for us because they say, I know you guys work in some small spaces. <laughs> this is clearly for Ron and Rob, right? Uh, what bag that's because we can't afford the mansions. <laughs> well, yeah. And I've been doing uh, for so long. I did condos and stuff in the city. And uh, anyway, she, uh, they say, I'm just guessing she, I don't he or She says, they say, what bag do you suggest for a Canon DSLR and carrying just two lenses? And hmm. so now th mm -hmm. this is an interesting question because, um, okay. I rarely go anywhere with more than one extra lens. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if it's me going personally somewhere for fun, I've got my Fuji X-T4 with the 23 mil F2 lens on it. And I've got my zoom, which is an 18 to 135, and that's it. Wait, sorry, which? So I've got my sorry, zoom. For, for context, mm -hmm. which which Fuji? That was that's a crop sensor Fuji, right? Yeah, yeah. the XT4. They only make well, they they make crop sensors or medium fo or formats. They don't make a full frame, a right, full, right, right. Okay. full frame. But then, so then we're we're yeah. thinking about crop factor there. So it's so, sorry. Yeah, so it's a 35 mil. Okay. Gotcha. It would be a 35 mil equivalent. Yep. And so, like I said, that's why the Tamron 20 to 40 makes a whole lot mm -hmm. of sense to me. Um, but the the reason I carry that around is because that's all I need, right? From a 18 to 135, that'll capture pretty much everything that I need. And, and having my uh, 23 mil, 35 mil equivalent is going to be uh, the perfect uh, street camera. However, for work though, uh, we try and do the same thing. Like we shoot condos and we shoot houses and it's all our, my entire business is around shooting real estate. And so we need to be in and out of house quickly, efficiently, and we don't want to be carrying in bags, doing a setup, doing a takedown, anything like that. So with all of my staff, uh, they have their camera 
on uh, on the tripod with one lens on it and then they have another lens that we carry around in a uh, speed it's called I think it's called a speed exchange bag it was from low pro and uh, let's see now I'm gonna see if I can find this yeah the the uh, bef- there it is uh, it is the low pro pro tactics lens ex- lens exchange bag uh, the 200 aw and with that it's got it's cool because what it has is this dual compartment thing so you unzip it you pull it out and then there's two compartments so you can put your the current lens that's on your camera into one compartment before taking out the other lens and putting it onto your body so when it's zipped up there's only room for one but when it's zipped open there's room for two so wow. you're not fumbling around. You could actually clean your sensor, having both your lenses in the bag, and then put the new lens on. It's a it's actually a really good bag. Mm-hmm. Again, Low Pro Pro Tactics Lens Exchange 200 AW. They are not a sponsor, but if they'd like to sponsor the show, we would more than welcome them sure, to sponsor sure. the show because we <laughs> love sponsors. Well, send uh, send, <laughs> right. me, send and... me a link. I'll put it in the show notes. And yes, definitely. So that that's a really good one there. Uh, that's what we use for our team. And so whenever you see any of our uh, staff out there, they've got this little lens exchange bag on their hip, their camera on their tripod, and that's it. Myself, personally, I like to use a the Peak Design um, messenger bag because it's just big enough to carry my uh, Fuji. Uh, it's big enough to carry my Mac laptop, and it's big enough to carry my one extra lens and a water bottle. And uh, that's what I'm usually hauling around while I ride around town on my one wheel and take pictures. What's a one wheel? You don't know what a one wheel is? Are you like in a circus? Well, yes, kind of. But it, no, it's, imagine, um, imagine a skateboard with, uh, with one larger wheel in the middle. Like, uh, yeah, the kids next door have those. Yeah, yeah, they're fun. <laughs> they're so much fun. And when you, you're riding around one of those with a, with a camera on, you can pretty much shoot anything you want. People just think that you're a weird tourist or a teenager. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, I'll I'll add um, I'll add to. Well, first of all, I think I have the same bag, the same Peak Design. Is that the original that they did the uh, the original um, funding? What was it? A, was one of those? I think they did. Yeah. I got yeah. one of those originally, and I still yeah. have it. It's been a few years, and, and I agree. Now, that one, that's my kind of carry-all where, yeah, it fits a laptop, and my it fits like a whole micro four-thirds setup if that's what you have, and that's mm-hmm. what I use it for. So pretty much whenever I go places, I always have at least my Olympus stuff with me, and then it also has space just yeah. for some pers- whatever personal thing. So it's a really good... Um, compromise uh not really compromise i mean it's really good for just general like uh as long as you don't have big heavy dslrs which uh l specifically did ask about and so Mm -hmm. with a dslr it'll carry what rob said yeah you'll have a spare lens and i was wondering if uh, l wants to have two spares or just two so one on and one spare if it if it's one on and one spare i highly recommend I, i have this i have this sling uh from i'm looking at i don't know what the I could never come up with the model. I've had it so long, but it's a Tamarack. It's a sling. It's um, it's l- like low width. Uh, it's not sticking way off my back like a backpack. And um, it's mm-hmm. so old. It's getting so beat up, but I love it. And I want to replace it, but I can't find a good replacement. Um, but it just has mm. three uh, slots. So normally that's one on each side plus one where you put your camera with the lens on it, the lens in, you know lens in the middle yeah. on the camera and the two but i almost always use it with one spare lens so it depends of course on the situation so if i'm going for a certain kind of job i'll have i probably don't need even a spare lens because <laughs> things that i do are so specific these days i pretty much just have one lens for it and um so i choose the, the appropriate lens i'll probably have one extra anyway just in case or mm-hmm. maybe i want to go shooting after depending where i am maybe i just I'm just, I just can't leave everything home and I want to have stuff. I want to have options, you know? Uh, and then I'll probably put my Theta Z1 360 camera in the spare side because now it's a, um, one slot is open. So, and it has space for remote and replacement batteries and cards and all that. So, 
I really recommend one of those like not low. Well, low pro I think is perfectly good um, brand, but I'm, I'm saying low pro as in low profile um, doesn't seem like a huge camera bag. I really, I'm six two and like two twenty. I don't really like carrying around big bags. It's weird, I know, but I, I like to have. <laughs> I like to be. I don't like to look like I'm carrying around a bunch of camera gear for one thing, and I just I'm just mm-hmm. trying to that's trying true. To travel lighter and then do more do more like that in life these days and be less um, burdened by all that. So, so for uh, one DSLR and a let's say one big spare or second lens, both so you have two big lenses. And I'm guessing if if L is saying I know you work in small spaces, maybe they are also a real estate photographer. So I have one other recommendation for that, which is bring what you need. If it's a big bag, you don't have to keep the bag with you because, uh, for me, mm-hmm. uh, if it's safe to leave it in the car, it's usually not safe to leave in the car for me. So I don't really recommend doing that, but you could, um, and you just take tripod camera with the wide lens with a remote ready to go. Uh, if you have a light, you might even have that too. Um, and then, um, if I get, if I do have my bag with me and I'm in a tight corner, I put my bag under the tripod. That's common. But I also just try to put it in a closet somewhere. Like if you're talking real estate, there's always a place to put, just, just leave it. And if you need it, it's there, but most of the time you don't. So just, just don't worry about, just don't try to carry it with you in the small spaces all the time. That's my main, my main mm-hmm. thing. Um, when I, yeah, no, I agree. Like we, when we shoot, you know, usually it's, uh, like we've got two lenses that we usually use. It's, um, uh, we use the 20, uh, the 12 to 24 Sigma art F two eight. And then we have the 24 one Oh five. And so that means that we've got anywhere from a 12 mil to 125, uh, range, which is all we need for real estate. And whenever we're inside the house, we usually stick with just the, the wide angle zoom. Yeah. And so everything else can just stay in the closet. Mm-hmm. Um, word of advice though, always, always, always make sure that you know what you go in with the same stuff every time so that you always come out with the same stuff every time. There you go. (laughs) I've had guys that have gone into places and they use a lockbox key, they get into the place, they shoot it, they come out and they put the lockbox key back and then then they're calling their realtor saying, you know what? I left my gear inside. Yeah. <laughs> or I left this. And I had a, I had, I had one guy that left his lunch in a house. Um, <laughs> he left his so lunch. <laughs> whatever you... Yeah. And so it's like, you know what? Always, it's, it's a repetitive business, right? So if you make it a habit, so you make it a habit of carrying one bag, one camera mm-hmm. in, you will always carry one bag, one camera just like just like <laughs> so, you should have and everything every place is different but just like you should have a progression in rooms and a, an order that you normally go in with exceptions and just like that so you don't forget anything mm-hmm. and i'm somebody that needs all that i'm the guy that has to put everything by the, the door when i'm leaving for the day so yeah. that i don't forget whatever i need for that day otherwise i will and i just have to do that and the same thing goes for um the order of shooting and i and I didn't even realize it until you said it that I'd do that as well as I, uh, I can look in my bag and I can see what's missing because I'm just in that habit. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Anything that's habit is good. Like it's, it's funny. Like just, just like you said, like when, when we're shooting like five houses a day, you think to yourself, Oh, did I shoot this bathroom? Yeah. Well, you've shot five and uh, five other bathrooms or maybe 10 or 20 bathrooms already that day. So that last bathroom, you're like, I can't remember. Yeah. Do you even remember all the <laughs> so, houses you shot that day, let alone the specific ones? Yeah. There has to be an order. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, like spring, uh, spring this year. I remember one of my guys who was so ti- uh, tired by the end of the day, cause he shot like 12 houses. He's sending the wrong files to the wrong realtors. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, <laughs> you need to have a nap. Oh dear. <laughs> like, you can't do this. So, hey, so yeah, hey. no, so that those would be my our recommendations. The only other one that I think would be interesting to check out, though, is the new Peter McKinnon bag. There, there's a I've Peter heard McKinnon bag? so many people. Yeah, Peter McKinnon came up with a camera bag, and I have had so many people just rave about that bag. And I thought, well, I don't like backpack style camera bags because as soon as it's a backpack, same here. You're kind of stuck in this stage where you, you know, putting in one one camera with one lens, it doesn't fill it up enough that it's just this huge ba- empty bag then. And so 
you almost fill it because you have the space. It's like if you buy a bigger house, you will eventually、mm-hmm. fill it up with more junk that you don't、yeah. need. And so that's why I really like having that、um, uh, Peak Design、uh, Messenger bag. Oh, hey, did I tell you about、uh, um, the fact that they exchanged mine? You're, you're which? Like my,、uh, my Peak Design、uh, exchange bag.、Yeah. Um, so, I had the,、um, the first version of the Messenger bag, and it was big enough for the 15 inch MacBook Pro at the time. Okay. Now, when the 16 inch MacBook Pro came out with the M1 chip, you know, how, remember how they made the, the body of the, the MacBook bigger? Yeah. Quite a bit so, bigger. Yeah, quite a bit bigger. So you put that into the old bag, and then all of a sudden, it's just a little bit of a tighter squeeze. And so, after a while,、uh, zipping it up and opening it up, the zipper failed because, well, quite frankly, I was stretching it. And so I thought, oh, crap, you know what? My zipper doesn't work anymore because it pulled out on one end, and now the,、uh, the clasp has fallen off. And I really didn't like that because you don't want to have your laptop not zipped up into your bag. And so I went to the camera store and I was talking to、uh, the people there and I said, hey guys, do you know anyone who could fix this? And they, they looked at me and they said, you know what, Rob? Let us talk to Peak Design. Next thing I know, they're like, here's a brand new one. By the way, it's, it's also the version 2, which has a bigger camera or a bigger spot for the laptop. So now your laptop will、nice. fit. And、What? right over the counter, they just gave me a new bag. Wow, that's great to hear that there's support like that. Yeah. Hey, there's yeah, a totally, totally support. There's、that. another idea a bag episode. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can get,、right. maybe we could ask.、Uh, well, Peter McKinnon has a huge, huge following, doesn't he? He's probably too big for us, but we could ask、oh, Peter, we、yeah. could ask somebody from、um, Peak Design to come on. Or, yeah, well, let's we'll think about that.、Um, I'm always、yeah. asking around and you never know what happens. Well, hey, let's、uh, let everybody go. I know we both need to get out of here as well. And so,、uh, tell you what, we don't really have、um, any much. To、uh, wrap up with, I don't think. I just accidentally played the、um, ba doom psh、uh, quietly, just in、yes, case you, did. you, you didn't notice. Darn it.、Um, so, <laughs> just to wrap up,、uh, he is Rob Moroto at robmoroto.com. Anything else you want to uh, uh, promote? I know you have a course coming up where you will talk about what order to shoot houses in and other things that we kind of quickly brought up here. Do you have anything else that you want to? Definitely.、Plan? I've got my YouTube channel and I've got a new、uh, couple of videos coming up quite quickly and、uh, all talking about Photoshop and all that stuff. So that'll be cool. Excellent. Excellent.、Um, I'm Ron Pepper. You can go to the much needed,、uh, well, my ronpepper.com needs updating to showing more or less what I do there. And、uh, rpepper is Instagram. And、uh, other than that, what do I want to throw out there?、Um, We're busy uh, uh, getting ready for Photomatics Pro 7. That's、um, something I'm doing on, it、uh, takes a significant amount of my、mm-hmm. photography world, is、uh, preparing for that. So you'll see、uh, an update coming to that pretty soon. Um, and、uh, I think with that, please、uh, let us know any feedback, good, bad, ugly,、um, uh, and all the things I mentioned.、Uh, que- yeah. More questions,、uh, any requests for subject matters. Guests,、uh, ideas, etc. And、uh, we will get you,、uh, we'll be back for roundtable next week. So, with that, let's move on. Go out shooting and see you, hear you next week. You'll hear us next week.